Bonjour Stéphane Winter. Bonjour. Uh, happy birthday. Ah, thank so, you. <laughs> it's your uh, 30th anniversary of uh, the label uh, you created, Winter and Winter. Do you think that the, uh, the concept, the conception, the idea uh, behind Winter and Winter uh, is the same from day one? It hasn't changed that much, the idea that you have? No, it changed totally. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, the, the first uh, 10 years, like 85 through 95, I uh, was working um, as a person who is doing documents. I was documenting the contemporary jazz scene. Like I started with Steve Coleman, I made his debut album, the debut album of uh, Cassandra Wilson, Greg Osby, Uri Kane, all these people, Jean-Paul Borelli, started working with me. So uh, at that time, I was totally concentrating to capture um, the spirit of um, young musicians and the contemporary scene. Also on the other side, I mean, I worked with the uh, Afro-American scene, but uh, also like with people uh, like Marc Ducré here in France, um, and then uh, Django Beige in, in England, and uh, Tim Byrne in America, and so on. Um, so I believe what happened between 85 and 95 um, was like the, 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 the active scene was really documented uh, in my first 10 years. And then it changed totally. Um, I, um, instead of being a documentarist, uh, I wanted to uh, make, I would call it like a, a featured uh, recordings, like you make a, a movie. And uh, it was more, for me, way more interesting to think about themes and develop the themes and develop with these themes and then with musicians uh, projects. Sometimes these projects, uh, um, were only made for recordings. It was not possible to put them on stage like uh, Orient Express, which starts in Paris and ends in Constantinople. Um, it was more or less impossible to put that on stage. Um, somebody here in France has done it. Uh, um, in, in Bordeaux, um, Patrick Duval, uh, today the place is called uh, Les Rochers de Palmea, they put uh, the Orient uh, Express on stage, but it was normally impossible. And with Uri Kane, we created Tin Pan Alley, uh, the sidewalks of New York. That was also a project which was really made like a movie. And um, so uh, it changed totally. And today I'm even more interested in uh, going into that direction to create sound stories together with noises, sounds, um, trying that these works are also getting presented in museums to make recordings out of it and so on. It's, yeah, it, it, the whole world changed totally. Do you think that this uh, evolution, this, all these changes came because the record industry changed too? Yes, or uh, let's put it the other way around. Um, there is a producer um, who is known, I guess, here in uh, France because uh, he's working with a couple of very uh, famous French musicians. Um, it's uh, Sigi Loch from ACT. And uh, Sigi told me one day, but I believe he was not really uh, analyzing what he said. He said to me, um, the music business started with the hardware. So um, the, the person who founded the, the record player was Emil Berliner, and he was the founder of Deutsche Grammophon. But the main reason why he founded Deutsche Grammophon was that he needed software for his hardware so that he can sell his hardware. And I believe we have had a wrong start. Um, most of the record companies were hardware companies like Sony or Philips, uh, Siemens at the beginning, uh, Telefunken and so on. And um, I was thinking a lot about uh, our history and then I figured out when you think about movie, and you think about what happened 100 years ago, then immediately people think about Fritz Lang or uh, Metropolis uh, or Murnau and all these people. So they were from the beginning on interesting movies, not just documentations. And uh, I just thought, why don't we do that with the music? Why do we just document? It's great to make documents, and I also will do in the future documents. I mean, that's not the point. but. There is also something else, and uh, I was interested in this something else. In the, in the beginning, uh, some record labels were like references for you, some like historical record label, not only in jazz or in the history of uh, the 
music recordings? I'm I mean, for, for, yes, I mean, of course. I mean, for sure, when I discovered jazz, um, I uh, was listening a lot to Blue Note, um, you know, and uh, funny enough, um, um, I was very often going backwards. So I, I started with the contemporary jazz scene and then I wanted to know what happened before. Um, so that was for me uh, absolutely interesting. Um, but on the other side, um, there were movies uh, who inspired me. Um, if I think, for example, uh, now I'm working together with him, which is a, a great luck for me and I love it, but uh, Fitzgeraldo from uh, Werner Herzog was a very, very important movie for me. And uh, I believe that um, this uh, dream, what Fitzgeraldo has had to build an opera house in the jungle, uh, today I have a kind of this dream to build like a, a museum, a sound museum, um, where it's possible to make sound installations, to work with musicians, to work with noise artists and put these things together. And then I'm thinking also about the future and digital downloads. And I believe what is presented in these museums can be downloaded for the people who like it. And, and then uh, they can buy these sounds and listen to it at home. And I, I think this is one way which absolutely leads into the future. You always uh, take care about all aspects of, uh, of the projects uh, which are released on, on the winter and winter from like the, the booklet and all that, the packaging and all that. So with a digital world, this is over, but the good, the good thing is that now with, for the sound it can be better. So how do you see this uh, mutation, transformation like from... Uh, I mean, for me, digital? the most important part is really uh, the sounds and the music. I mean, uh, that's, that's really the thing what, what interests me. Um, but uh, for example, I also like good wine. And I if I have the possibility to drink the, the wine out of a good glass, then uh, I, I like to, tr to use a glass and not a plastic cup. So um, um, what you said is absolutely right. Um, we can make now especially digital music in a, in a way better resolution, in a way better sound quality. What is still missing for me is um, that um, the home equipment has to improve. And um, I believe that this will happen in the future. So uh, um, we, I'm doing most of the recording um, with uh, high resolution and um, uh, we're doing also a lot of analog recordings and then transforming these analog recordings to uh, a high, like 24-bit um, uh, digital resolution. But I think it's absolutely necessary um, that the hardware industry um, is changing and offering um, to the people at home a better equipment. But I, I'm sure this will happen. For this uh, 30th anniversary, you you did release some like special edition and some special project like the Jubilee. Yeah, the edition Jubilee edition. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's uh, was it, or is an interesting project. But because I have um, chosen ten different themes, was it difficult? Um, <laughs> the themes, I have to say, strange enough, no. It just uh, clearly happened, and uh, I um, I wanted to uh, have. Um, to document, so to say, these different streams of winter and winter. And um, no, that was easy. Interesting was uh, to, uh, w what I'm still doing at the moment, to work with the program, um, because uh, that gives me the possibility to listen to a, a lot of recordings which we have done. And sometimes for me, it's a big, big surprise. Um, it's a surprise. At the moment, I put together uh, the album um, uh, of Theo Blackman and he's singing only love songs and um, I discovered so many beautiful songs what we recorded together and uh, it's it's yeah um, it's a luck for me to put this Jubilee edition together um, certain albums I think will be a surprise we're making an album which we release um, in uh, um, late summer it's called uh, music for ironing on a rainy Sunday um, I want really to put together um, most um, beautiful, easy listening music. Music what you just can enjoy at home when you do something, you cook or you iron your clothes or whatever, and just music which is beautiful to listen to. And besides that, um, we're putting out an album right now which is called um, The Rest is Silence. I'm playing a little bit uh, with this famous book from Alex Ross, The Rest is Noise. 
and um, um, I have chosen the rest is silence, which is a Shakespeare quote, and um, it's uh, for me it's really the music um, which I think um, is presenting the essence of contemporary music of today, and. Uh, I think people who will listen to this album will be surprised that there is a lot of music on it which is very e easy to listen to and it's very emotional and beautiful and not really abstract. I, I like that. D during this uh, 30 years of uh, winter in winter, uh, one of the job was like producing, being a producer. Uh, how did you deal with that? Do you think that a, a good producer has to be a good shrink, for example? Oh, it's always different, I have to say. I mean, there are, it, it depends on with whom you're working and what kind of project it is. It's always different. I mean, um, uh, I think, for example, when I was working with Paul Motion, you need like just a lot of trust. I mean, I felt that I have to trust him. And uh, I think uh, he also felt that he has to trust me, and then it was working. I think uh, with Paul, if, if this trust would not have existed, we could not have made like 25 albums together. Um, other musicians sometimes, uh, th they need uh, somebody who is, so to say, cracking the whip. I mean, you have to push them to do something, to write something, to make rehearsals and, and to bring the project together. And uh, then I feel like more that I'm a slave driver. I'm, I'm really trying to, to organize a project. And then the, there are musicians um, like Ernst Reisiger. We have like um, an easy way how to, wor to work together because uh, we talk about projects and uh, we have an incredible close understanding for each other. That's absolutely beautiful. How came the uh, element of traveling all over the world in, uh, in the Winter and Winter story? Oh, it started with Venezia La Festa. It started um, when I recorded uh, the sounds of St. Mark's Square with all the coffee house orchestra and the bells and the people and so on. And then um, I was thinking about other locations where the society is still together with musical elements. And uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, Buenos Aires. And then the next travel was we went to Buenos Aires and I recorded in Buenos Aires um, sounds on the street and the tango clubs and so on. And then from that moment on it started. What changed during, or f I call these uh, audio films, what changed was that after the, I can't remember, fourth or fifth audio film, um, Mariko, my wife, said, let's do an audio film of uh, a theme which does not exist anymore. And uh, we created a historic audio film about the Tin Pan Alley in New York together with Uri Kane. So we, recre we, we uh, created uh, a journey through the music um, which happened after the Civil War uh, and before the First World War in, in New York. Um, music um, which was played in vaudevilles, which was played in, at weddings and, and so on. And we created just um, sound stories with the environmental sounds. Uh, that was a lot of fun and I, I like to do something like that, to uh, create like a filmmaker sound stories of uh, also of forgotten times. Um, and um, we did this again with Shanghai um, and uh, there are other plans also for the future where we want to do something like that. You mentioned the future. How do you do you see this future? I mean, do you work like day by day? Or you you have a lot of projections about how you'll see your label in like five, ten, twenty years. It's very crazy because I see something, but uh, I do not know if it's possible to reach that. I, I really want. I don't know um, where, and I don't know how, but I, I, I want to create and to build uh, a sound museum. There was like um, an exhibition 1958 in Brussels at the um, World Expo. Uh, Corbusier uh, with uh, Sinakis and Varese have built Poème Electronique. And uh, for me, this Poème Electronique um, is an absolutely fantastic building with sound and picture uh, installations. And that's a direction which interests me a lot. And I would like to build a house for the future a house for uh, where um, 
yeah, installations are happening, where performances are happening, where you can combine these kind of things, where noise artists are presenting something. A, a, a place where you go through a museum and you experience sound works, sound objects, um, things like that, installations combined with videos and, and so on. And I really believe people will go there, people will love to, uh, to see that, to hear that. And it will um, inspire people uh, to listen again to music and um, to uh, get these sounds, to listen and to experience it at home. So that's, I think, uh, my, um, normally I never have had really a, a vision, but for me at the moment, this is absolutely my vision. And um, when these first 30 years um, were over, like th this year in springtime, and I remembered, okay, 30 years ago, you were in the studio with Steve Coleman and you recorded with him Motherland Pulse, which was the start of Steve's career and the start of my career as a producer. And then I thought, okay, I have now, now a new dream. Uh, uh, th there is a totally a vision and I, I hope that I can realize it. And uh, it should be a, a sound house, a house where uh, you can experience sound installations. That means that you are not interested anymore in like documenting a new scene because no, you say no 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 that's you but know because a, a day is just 24 hours and you can do everything yeah yeah but that's uh, of course um, um, if uh, yes of course I want to do that I mean uh, no 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 I, I don't think uh, that, that uh, something like that or a project like that would work against it I mean for example when I heard for the first time um, uh, Stefan Seniuk and Gato Loco uh, I was totally blown away I mean I heard this group for the first time in Brooklyn at four o'clock in the morning on a street. I was there drinking some beer and then Gato Loco and Stefan Senio came and they played and people started dancing on the street and I thought, wow, that's great. I mean, 23, 24, 25 year old musicians are playing with brass instruments um, on the street and the guitar player has had like a, a little amplifier with him um, and people just enjoyed and I thought, I want to work with this guy. And um, that was, uh, for example, uh, for me, uh, or, or I would call this, it's, it's, it's a document. It's a document what Stefan is doing uh, with uh, Gato Loco, and I don't want to miss that. Uh, that's a lot of fun to do something like that. Okay, the last question, the, the worst question. Uh, if you have to, to keep one, two albums in your old catalog, I know it's like choosing between children and all that, or if you have to pick one or two events that happen in the, in the history of uh, the 30 years of winter and winter? Oh, it's easy now because I listen to so many things and um, uh, uh, if, I guess if you would have asked me that question like uh, um, a year ago... Um, so the answer I would have been different? If <laughs> not different. I would not, ha I would not have been able to answer it because uh, I listen to everything and I, I'm, I, I listen to everything not only one time. I'm, I'm, I was really working with the whole material. I think... Um, Uri Kane's uh, Primal Light will be an album which will also uh, have an existence in the future. I think it's one of the most important albums. It's uh, combining um, jazz and classic in a totally new way and uh, it's, it's absolutely fascinating, also musical-wise. At the moment we put out this album on a vinyl. It's a double vinyl and uh, we put it out and the sound is really great. Dave Douglas' Charms of the Night Sky, I think, is one of the most beautiful trumpet albums of all time. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I love it. Um, and strange enough, there are also uh, some albums um, which are uh, maybe seems to be totally non-important, but I think they have uh, an incredible artistic uh, uh, a meaning and potential and, and deepness that's, for example, uh, So Lucky from Noel Akshuti. Um, what he has done with these Kylie Minogue songs and how he played these songs is just unique um, and very, very beautiful. Okay. Merci, Stefan Winter, and see you in 30 years. Ha, thank you. Mm -hmm.